Woohoo! This is the death of Wimbledon as far as I'm concerned. And the local businessman who made it happen walked on water. Maybe it was the right or wrong way for Milton Keynes to find its football, but find its football it has and we've kicked the ball today. Welcome back to Big Hell the Nerd and today's episode of the Winkerman Way as we have the end of season review. As we go through the team, look at the stats of the players, how they got on, judge the team, look at who did well, who did poorly, who we're going to sell, who we need to bring in, try to get an idea of how we're going to play next season, because next season is an important one. First one in the Premier League of this save and for the MK Dons ever. We're creating history right now. Team that in real life got relegated from League One. We got promoted that season, first time. So we're going to go through that, have a look at the end of season stuff, see how we get on. Remember, we've got 35 million to spend in the summer and we spend it very frugally. So we will have, oh, we had our record attendance broken in that last game of the season, 30,582. A little more than the Man City game that we had. Will Dig named in the overall uh, 11, he must be on the bench. Armstrong and Sal, our top guys. Peter Powell still holding up in there in the all-time 11. End of season awards, Bandanelli fans, player, Gribben second. That's amazing. Gribben coming in first season and he's in there. Sally Kai Kai third. I think it's the first season we've not had, um, uh, um, uh, what's his name? So, Osman So up there. Signing the season, Callum Gribben on three. Young player season, Callum Gribben. Everybody loves Callum Gribben. Uh, season review. We done well here, didn't we? we never. I don't think we actually touched first. The highest we ever got was second until second to last game of the season. What a way to do it. Average attendance, 21,000, 71% full. That's good. We've got the stadium ready for the Premier League. We can fill that up next season, which is good. Match of the season against Preston. Remember to forget against Huddersfield, who also went up. Uh, we've done the end of season review. We said we're going to add some more players to the team and try and avoid relegation. The board obviously love me because I'm freaking brilliant. And then that's it, I think. Gribbon wanted a new contract. He's now got that because I need him, I think. So let's have a look then. Let's go in. And if anyone that hasn't seen these before, I do these at the end of each of my um, seasons. It just goes through and look at um, the players, the different players who, and like I said, the stats. The, actually how they performed, not their tributes, how good they are, how they actually performed. So we'll start as we always do with the goalies. Reports straight into stats here. We do these one by one just to, to compare them side by side. So Ben Hamer, 34-year-old Ben Hamer, not talking about retiring yet. He probably will be my backup next year. I'm hoping desperately. I mean, I've got 35 million. I will be able to buy a goalie with 35 million. He has 71% shot save ratio. Only 34 of those 73 held, so 50% on that, which is not good. But 71% is good. It's probably the highest we've had. Um so he's done, a, he's done a sterling job when he came in. He is injury prone, which is the problem. He was out for four months with a hip injury. I think it's a recurring one because he was out last season with it as well. Uh, played 24, conceded 29, seven clean sheets. Not bad. Not bad from Ben Hamer. Like I could say, he will be back up. He's only two and a half star now because hopefully we'll be bringing in someone new. Let's look at Peacock Farrell as well, who's technically our best goalie now. Um, but, you know, something about him I just don't like. Yeah, 22 games, 31%. So 68%. So he wasn't that far off. Again, held 59 of the 122 shots saved. So he, he faced more shots and held about the, oh, a bit more percentage, actually. Slightly more percentage than Ben Hamer. So stats-wise, not too bad. Shot saved uh, 3.52 per game. Goals conceded 1.64. What was then? 2.7. And 1.1. So he conceded less, but he had less shots against him, which is, I suppose, fair and fair. So we'll see. Peacock Farrell, he's okay. And if someone comes in for him and we've got, oh, just punched the mic. If someone comes in for him and we've got, um, got a goalie already set. We'll probably, we'll probably flog him on, won't we? But yeah, not bad, not bad, not great. So that's the goalies. We know we need goalies. Every season I do this, I say I need a goalie. I never end up getting around to buying one. Right, let's now move on to the defenders. So defender analysis. Uh, show filters. All positions. Defenders. Lovely job. We'll include the other 23s in there because some of these guys are out on loan. So if we look at the average minutes per game, Medford Smith plays the most 44 apps. 
Uh, 43 from Roshan Williams, 42 from Williams, 39 Wharton, 19 Walsh. Average rating, Roshan Williams the highest up there, followed by Medford Smith. These two I liked. Great signings this season. Wharton down there at uh, 17, 6.9 for Kavanaugh. Wal Williams and Walsh dropped right off below the sevens. Not good at all. Tackles one ratio. And Mankoa, great guy. This guy's got great potential. He needs to do, he needs to, probably can't play because we're going to be in the Premier League now. He need, we need to do something with him anyway. He's got such good potential. We need to try and develop that. But yeah, tackles one. Highest, Roshan Williams, 83%. Williams, second, 79. Walsh, 79. Woodson, 78. Memphis Smith down on 75. That's fine as a, as a wide defender. Tackles per game. Joe Rourke, another player with quite good potential that we need to do something with. Medford Smith, uh, Kavanaugh up there as well. The wide guys making the tackles. I like to see that. Uh, let me just look at key tackles. Roshan Williams, 40 key tackles. Wooden, 30. Okay, that's good. About one per game. Fouls. Medford Smith made the most. He needs to watch that. Interceptions. Scott Wooden making more interceptions than Roshan Williams. Showing that he can read the game a bit better, which is interesting. I feel like it, Wooten and Walsh are both like 29 and 30. It's got to be their last season, hasn't it? Really, if I can get some better defenders, they've got to go. They, they're not good enough anymore. Uh, interceptions per 90 minutes. This is an interesting one. Wooten, yep. Yeah. Walsh, the older guys making more interceptions um, than Roshan Williams. So we probably need an experienced head to come in at centre back to partner him. Uh, head of one percentage. Williams up there, that's interesting, there's a right back. Wotton, Kavanaugh, Roshan Williams at 78. I really feel like, yeah, we need a top quarter, Premier League quality older defender, 30 year old defender to partner Roshan Williams. And then we can use a Mankawar as our backup, get rid of Wotton and Walsh. Uh, aerial challenges, yeah, that's fine. Headers one per 90 minutes. Wotton and Walsh up there. Mistakes for goals. Wotton two, that's why I got rid of him. Uh, Method Smith two, that's not good. Didn't realise he had two. One for Williams, one for Kavanaugh, one for Walsh. Which is that's good. We don't want any in there for uh, Roshan Williams. That's what we like to see. Got to watch Method Smith in case he uh, makes too many mistakes. Um, in terms of mistakes, uh, Method Smith and Williams making about the same from the time they were out on the wide in the wings. That's okay. Pass completion ratio. Only 90% for Joe O'Rourke. That's bloody good. 78% Method Smith, 78 Kavanagh. Kavanagh's probably going to go now as well. 28, two star. I'd rather bring him one of the youngsters. Uh, cross completion, we don't need to worry too much about that. So defender-wise, Roshan Williams just was amazing, wasn't he? He came in, I thought at the start of the season he was a bit off, but actually he was bloody good. Same as Medford Smith. These two are, are my sure fires. I will look for a new right back and I will look for a new centre back. Uh, and then we work out what we do with these guys. Callum Britton didn't appear anywhere on those lists, did he? I think his his time is is done. Yeboah uh, Amankwa, two and a half star now. He could easily come in as a backup for my whoever we end up with as a uh, centre back pairing. Robbie Diaz and we've got Lavano on the bench as well, and then Adi Higgins. He's a bit low. Lavano is the right back who I was hoping would be a bit better by now. Um, he's had a few seasons out on loan, but his potential's dropping off now. I'd rather buy a new right back. I think. So that's what we're going to go for then. Medford Smith and Roshan Williams definitely in. We're going to need another centre-back. We're going to go with an experienced guy, a guy that can read the game, that can help tutor Roshan Williams. And also a right-back, another Premier League quality one, if possible. So now let's move on to the midfield pairing in this 4-2-3-1. And we played that for most of the season, to be honest, didn't we? Um, so if we look at appearances... Uh, sorry, so the, the wingers will be in here as well, but that's fine. Uh, so Sally Kai Kai... 48, 46 for Cullen, 44 for Gilby, 41 Bandanelli, 40 for Grimmin, 13 for Pat Green. It'd be interesting to see how he did. Chuck's only got 10. Morgan only got 10, which is why he wants to leave. Britain, I oh know he's a defender. Morgan, but Adekane only got three starts. Or Adekane. I didn't really treat him that well, did I? Average rating, Bandanelli 7.43. Grimmin, 7.43. Kai Kai, 7.39. Morgan as a backup, 7.38. Very good. Gilby, look at all these sevens, man. That's amazing. Amazing work. Cullen, could have done better. Goals from midfield. Look at this. Band, uh, Kaiko 21. Bandanelli on 17. And they also, that's why I love wingers on attack, man. They're so, so good. Um, Gilby got seven. Gilby got seven. Chuck's five. Morgan three. So Callum Ribbon only got three. 
from that role on attack, but he did get the most amount of assists, 17 assists. But Kai Kai, 15 assists, Banani, 13. Those guys, goals, and they were setting each other up. It's brilliant. Gilby got 10 assists as well from the box-to-box -box role. That's bloody good, actually. 17 assists from an advanced playmaker and 10 assists from a, a uh, what's he called, box-to-box. -box. Makes me think about those roles a little bit. Pat Crane got seven assists in 13 games. That's real bloody good. Again, playing in that Callum Gribben role. Okay, assists per 90 minutes. Joe Rourke right up there. Bobby Adekane, six. Morgan, Gribben, Pat Crane. So the guys that are uh, higher up on this or the guys that played less, but good to see that they're there. Chances created per 90 minutes. Morgan, Gribben, Bandanelli, Adekane, Crane. I like Pat Crane. Again, someone else we need to do something with. The problem is we've got Gribben is 23 and Crane is 20. Both very, very good attacking midfielders. Uh, so we're going to have to work out some sort of formation thing with these, aren't we? We can't throw two of them in there because I really love my wingers as well. Unless we look to drop the wingers back and lose a man in central midfield. But that's a bit that's a bit of a dodgy thing when you're, uh, you're going to be defending in the Premier League, aren't you? We're not going to be able to go out and attack. Key passes per 90 minutes. Gribben, 2.28. Morgan, 2.2. Uh, Pat Crane 1.96, Bandanelli up there then, and Neke, Bobby Adekane. I'm interested to see Gilby and uh, Cullen all the way down here. Pass completion, Gribbin topping that. Ratio, Cullen, very good, very short passes he must play. There's two central midfielders, that's good to see. Don't give away the ball very often. Uh, key tackles, Cullen 14. Look at the amount of tackles Cullen made compared to Gilby. Uh, ball winning midfielder on defend. 229 tackles in 46 games versus Gilby 66. Josh Cullen, unsung hero of this team, I think. Uh, tackle one, but Chucks and Eke, 92%. Kai Kai. What did he get, Cullen? 74, not bad for the amount of tackles he's thrown in. Tackles per game. Yes, yeah, so this is where Joe O'Rourke, I want to train him as a backup for Joe, uh, Josh Cullen. 22 and 26, so they, they the timings work out just about. Joe O'Rourke needs a bit more game time, I think. But yeah, he's going to have the stats to do so. We'll have to train him in that role. Interceptions for 90 minutes. Uh, Gilby and Cullen both up there. That's good to see. Doing their job in midfield. Uh, fouls. Cullen, I mean, I'll let him have that one. Mistakes. Gilby made the most estate mistakes. Headers one. Crane. 77%. Gilby. That's good to see. Crane's another one that could play in centre midfield or play up top. Crane is kind of like my backup for... Um, where is he? Gilby. Yeah, as well as be my backup for uh, Gribbin. But the problem is Gilby and Gribbin never really have a bad game between them. So he doesn't get that much game time. Aerial challenges for 90 minutes. Gerald Rock throwing himself in now. It's good to see. It is one. Pat Crane, 5.3. How tall is he? Does it show me in here? Six, no, he's only six foot. Okay. Shots on target. Morgan up there. Shots on target ratio. Morgan, Kai Kai, Banelli. Good to see Morgan. His potential is not great. I'm sh it's a shame we haven't played him more. But I was I, I was kind of thinking that Banelli was going to go this season, that someone was going to really poach him and I need Morgan to come in. But yeah, it hasn't been. Crosses, 78 from Banelli, 65 from Grimmin, 59 from Kai Kai. Banelli doing the, the, the dog's work there. 33% ratio for Pat Crane, 20% for Grimmin, 15 for... So Grimmin, a very good cross with the ball, 65. And he's got a 20%. Compared to Bandanelli's and Kai Kai's as well down there. And dribbles per game, Bandanelli, those guys, as per usual. I think attacking wise, centre midfield and attacking wise, I think we're fine. We've got back up there, they're maybe not good enough. They're like a bit young. What we do with Chucks, I don't know, he could probably go. Pat Crane can be that backup for Gilby and backup for um, Gribbin. And then we've got uh, Joe O'Rourke who can be back up for Josh Cullen. We don't have any backup other than that. They're the only two, really. Well, I suppose Gilby can play both roles. So we have players there. Whether we need to, we'll see who comes free. Because I don't really want to buy anyone and force anyone else out of the team. We may lose Lewis Morgan. We may need to bring in some youngsters. But hopefully we can keep him on for another season as a backup. And same with Adekane. He's probably not going to make his potential now, which is annoying. His potential dropped down to a three. But great, great player to bring on. I love him. He's been here for so long, but I love him too much. So that's the midfield. Let's then have a look at the attackers. What we will put attacking midfielders and attackers on. We'll have a look at the goal scoring rate again of some of these wide players. So we look at appearances. 
Armstrong had 31. He was out for a lot of the season, really, wasn't he? Will dig 13. Uh, and so had six in terms of defenders. Awusu got his one goal from his sub appearance. Uh, average rating, band, uh, Grimmie, where is he? Armstrong, 7.26. Not bad. Will dig seven. Just tipped over the seven. Osman, 6.81. I think Osman so is done for now, isn't he, really? Kai Kai getting the most amount of goals of any player from right wing. Armstrong second with 20. Wildig with 17. Wildig got 17 goals from 13 appearances to 18 sub-appearances. That's crazy amount of goals. That's great. Bandanelli 17 as well. That's, I think Armstrong up top on his own. Wildig is back up. Is is got to work for another season, doesn't it? And we just uh, let Mr. Osmond so graciously depart the, the club. 32. He did as well for a good couple of seasons, but recently he's just not up to the mustard anymore. Goals per 90 minutes, Wildig, 1.05. Bulldog, I forgot about Bulldog, he'll be going as well. Armstrong, 0.7. Wildig, that's an amazing amount of goals. Uh, like I said, he is my uh, my Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He comes on and scores goals. Shots on target ratio, Bulldog and, and, and Osman so Most shots. Wildig, not far behind though. Armstrong as well. Shots on target, same. On target ratio, Armstrong, 59%. Morgan, 59 58 for Wildig. They're both very good. Offsides. Armstrong 83, Wildig only 32, but obviously a hell of a lot less games. Assists, what did they get? Eight for Armstrong. Wildig only got two. That's not bad. Assists per 90 minutes. Uh, this is the more useful stat. Armstrong, yeah, Wildig a lot less on the assists. He's much more of a goal scorer. Chances created. Yeah, it's mainly those guys. Oh, where is Armstrong? Oh, there he is. Don't really care about passes. Not really for the strikers. Headers. Pat Crane. Oh, he's right down. Armstrong. 21% header 1% uh, ratio. Aerial attempts. He's... Uh, Will dig second. 31%. Osmond so sweet. They're not great. They get, they're going in for the most amount of headers. And their ratio is not great. But you are putting strikers against defenders, I suppose. So, between them, they're all comparable. Armstrong, worse than Will dig. Be great to play those two as a two, but I just can't work out how you put an advance with Crane and Gribbin. I can't work out you play two strikers and you get away with an attacking midfielder as well. So there we go. So that's the strikers, and I think I think I'm happy. I'm happy with Armstrong to go forward again. Will Digger's back up. He's got the potential to to out to beat Armstrong in terms of being a player. There's the option there to put him as the two up top. We don't have any backup outside of there. Bulldog's gonna go. Osman So's gonna go. It's a shame, but he's gonna have to go. Um, which doesn't leave us with much. We've got some of the younger players we'll have to maybe bring up and have a look at. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it, it's going to be a one-striker formation, isn't it? One-striker formation, Pat Crane and Grimm behind. We've got very good youngsters behind certain players. So I don't think we need to worry too much. I'm going to use the 35 million primarily for a goalkeeper and defenders. That has to be what we need. We, we are a very good goal-scoring team, a very poor defensive team. So the money has to go there. So that's why I think I'm going to put the money into. Keep a 4-2-3-1. Maybe tra train a 4-4-2 as well. Or a, a dropped formation where it's like a 4-4-1-1. In case we want to be super defensive. Uh, run those as the two formations for the start of next season. But we will see. So if you have any comments, any uh, ideas of where we should be uh, strengthening. Any players you think we might look at. Bearing in mind we're in. Uh, that will be what season 22-23. Uh, by the time we get going, I will have a bit of time before this going out and the first episode being recorded, hopefully, to get some of your comments on board. But we will leave it there. Well, that, that sums up a, a, a stressful season, but a bloody good season. We got promoted as champions from the championship. That means we have a League One title and now we have a championship title. And we are finally in the Premier League as the mighty MK Dons. Now, can we solidify? That's what next season's got to be about, solidifying and staying in the uh, Premier League, and then that FA Cup. We are now, we are coming towards the end. The FA Cup win, and if we can get a decent position in the Premier League, that, that signifies the potential end of this series. And it's, it's exciting. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I'm hoping we can stay in the Premier League, because you know what? We could end up yo-yo straight back down, which will be horrible. So let's see how it goes. 35 million to spend, a pre-season, and I'll see you back for the start of the Premier League season. If you have enjoyed, smash that like button, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you back next time for some more Wink and Away action. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.